I'm just going to provide a little bit of a backstory about how we got to this point. It all started back in late 1990s, early 2000s. Uh, I was a very young teenager at the time, and I got this amazing program called Dance EJ. I played with it, and it was a lot of fun. It was my first exposure to uh, music production. Here it is right here. So this is Dance EJ. Essentially, you have sample loops that you can arrange over here on the main window, similar to a DAW. This is what really got me into music production. You're pretty much limited here. It's got some limitations. And when I try to add samples other than these, the timing was off. I had the other problems. And I ended up just stopped using it after a while. Then in 2010 or so, I purchased Fruity Loop Suite. And it wasn't intuitive for me, at least not for me personally. And I ended up just selling it. I, I couldn't figure it out, <laughs> basically. So that brings us to maybe 2016-ish, um, working for a certain company. And a co-worker is a music producer, and he produces dubstep and, and all kinds of music like that. I went to him and I said, hey, that sounds kind of interesting. Well, you know, what kind of programs do you use? And he said, hey, I use Ableton 10. And I said, okay, what's that? And he said, oh, it's very intuitive. It's easy to use. I never thought I'd be able to make music. And then I, I got this program and did some grinding with it. And it wasn't that bad at all. And I said, okay, hey, you know what? Let me try that out real quick. So I went ahead and bought the Ableton 10 suite after watching some videos on it, along with the Push 2, uh, along with my computer here. So this is my very humble setup, beginner setup. And so I played around with the program for a while. I said, hey, I can do this. This is, this is uh, something that really jives with me. I can actually work with this program. I can produce some beats and, and some music. And I really like it. There, there's the home studio set up there in the bedroom. Uh, humble beginnings. Just the computer, push to, and the DAW. And I decided to upgrade and get an audio interface so that way I can get some instruments in there. Since my computer had Thunderbolt 3, my coworker said, get something with real low latency. So I went ahead and got the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X Quad. And bang, there, I got my first synthesizer, the JP8000. I went through the whole thing, totally restored it. I've got a separate video for that restoration. And I also converted all the LEDs to blue LEDs and the blue screen and re redid the key bed and everything. So that's a pretty interesting video. I did a full technical video on that restoration. If you're interested, that would be under one of my playlists. Then I upgrade and get some monitors. Went ahead with the Atom Audio T7Vs because they've got that ribbon tweeter that my coworker was telling me about. Sounds really good. So I said, hey, let me try it out. Did some research. They, they're supposed to be pretty flat, so it's good for mixing. Oh, I got the Megami Gold that was suggested by a Sweetwater rep. He said they're really good cables. And got some isoacoustic isopuck minis to try to isolate those speakers from the desk surface. Uh, you can see the desk is pretty full now. So I've got the desk here, monitors, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I really need to do something. And my headphones suck too, so I went ahead and got some DT1770s Pros. These are more for recording vocals. Eventually, I'll get the 1990 Pros for mixing if I need to mix with headphones, but they'll do for now. So I was thinking, hmm, what? I, I need to do something here because I'm out of space. I've got a plastic table over here, and this is just not going to work for expanding my home studio. I thought, what am I going to do about this? I need to look at some studio desks. Lo and behold, the prices are pretty expensive. I saw this one here. I like the full-size keyboard. Another background, I am a piano player. Been playing since 10 years old. Classical piano. So I wanted a full-size MIDI controller keyboard. And I saw this desk. I said, hey, that looks good. Got computer, got space for monitors. But there's not really any space for any synthesizers on here. Or for expansion, really. It's just a, a desk with a, with a tray. A slide out tray. So I'm looking around some more and I'm looking at the price. I'm thinking, wow, that's uh, so it's like 1350. So I'm looking here at this other desk. Okay, this one's pretty cool looking. You've got some space here for maybe some rack since it's not not that many. The the price tag is just ridiculous. Look at this. Two thousand five hundred and ninety-five ish dollars. I can't afford that. I'm not I don't want to dump that much money into the desk. 
I, I looked at this desk next. Forty seven hundred dollars, a hundred dollars delivery, so forty eight hundred for this thing. And you don't even really even have that many places to put things. So you've got a, a you've got a slide out tray here. You can't even fit eighty eight. I can't, I'm not sure if that's eighty eight keys or not. That it doesn't look like it. So continue looking. I'm like, man, these prices are astronomical here. And there was one for forty. Let's see, four thousand dollars, three hundred eighty tax, two seventy delivery. This one's got a lot of rack space. But if I have a MIDI controller or a large keyboard, it's going to have to sit on the top here. Where am I going to put my mouse? So this one didn't really jive either. And here's another desk. $3,700. And, you know, the prices are pretty high. And Jamrax in general, they're a bit overpriced for what you get. Yeah, they look cool, but they're definitely overpriced. And here's another studio desk I was looking at. $2,800. The prices are just so high for these things. And this one, they picture these side tables but for, for racks, but they're sold separately. So that's even more money. This is ridiculous. What, what can I find that will work for a much better price point? I looked at this one. This one's pretty awesome. You know, you've got rack space here. You can fit a full-size keyboard, space for monitors, plenty of space for... Uh, your screens and you've got table surfaces up here and down here. I quite like this one, but the price tag is still a bit high for my liking just for some furniture. And then here's another one. You can't fit a full size keyboard here. You might up here. If I bought this one, I would basically put my mouse and keyboard down here and MIDI controller up top. But again, the price is a bit high. So then I looked at some better priced desks. Here was one I looked at, I was seriously considering. The price isn't too bad, and it's got tons of rack space. It's space for your keyboard and mouse. You can put your MIDI controller up here, a keyboard controller, but it's, it'll be a bit high, and it would block what's in these here, these racks here. The other thing that I didn't like about this is cable management. I mean, you're going to have wires. You're going to see all your wires. It's going to look like a, a rat's nest back there and you're going to see it. So I wanted something more clean than that. And I finally discovered this output desk. This is the one that I was about to pull the trigger on. It's got rack space. You can put your computer up top, monitors. You can fit a full size 88 key controller on here. It has cable management in the back. It's got these drop downs for cables from for desktop sense or what have you and, and for monitors and everything back here. So this is a really good design and the price isn't that bad. So if you want something that is not DIY, I would probably recommend this desk at, for a home studio. So I was really considering it. Here's a picture of it from their website. Very nice looking, it comes in different colors. I really dig the brown. And they also make a really cool side table thing here with rack space. You can slide this out for, for a controller or, or you could put a mixer up top. It's got this thing that slides out here that you can put some loop some cables on, headphones holder. I really liked it. I was so close to buying it, but in the end I didn't. And I'll show you why. I went here, I got the color I wanted. The color I wanted was an additional hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, they're they're kind of scalping there. And then keyboard tray, another 150. So that keyboard tray wasn't even included in the price. You have to pay more. So I went ahead and put it in the cart and to see how much it was. $898 shipped. Even that price isn't too bad, but I'm like a jack of all trades. I do auto repair, tuning cars, modifying cars, electronics, everything, a little bit of everything. I, I really try to dig into things and figure things out for myself. So I said, you know what? Let me try to build the desk myself. I can have it with everything that I want, how I want it, and I can do it for cheaper than this. I looked at the photos closely, looked at the features on here. Uh, the rack space was a bit disappointing. I wanted more rack space. Um, that was the first thing I was thinking. And they're, they're vertical, they're not angled. There's only, I can't remember what it is. It's like 3U. Is it 3U per bay? And I want more than that. I want more rack space if I'm going to have my main center desk here. I, I like the drop downs. 
I like the rack space being up here. I like the full size tray. I like the cable management to a degree because it's, it's hidden from the front. You can't see it. And uh, there it is, the front view, side view. But I don't like that you can see your rat's nest of wires from the side view. And I also don't like how thin this is right here. It looks a bit weird. But it's not bad. It's not a bad desk. It, if, if you not very good with wood or, or DIY things in general, this would be a good choice on a budget. And there's another view of the back here. So the cables come here and you're supposed to zip tie them or what have you here. And they have this vanity panel here. So you don't see it from the front. But from the side, you're going to see all your wires. So the obvious next step is to look at the general sizing. I, I took their dimensional profile from their website just to get a general idea of how wide the keyboard would be need to be, how wide the desk should be. And here's another point too I, I need to make about the output desk. If you buy the output desk, you're going to want to buy these risers because it's a bit low. So you want to buy these risers if you buy all the other stuff just to get it to a more appropriate height. And I, and I determined that the risers would be necessary for to be able to sit comfortably at the desk. So I do recommend getting those risers if you buy the output desk. But it will add a certain amount of instability. You're going to have a lot of weight on here. And it's on these little risers that aren't very stable. It will make it difficult to move the desk um, with everything on it. So that was another thing I didn't quite like about it. But I got this diagram just to look at the general dimensions and try everything out for ergonomics. And here's that side table. Seriously considering building one of these. DIY, of course, I'm not going to pay for it. Configure it to my personal needs, just like I did with the desk. I decided to draw up some blueprints for the desk with the features that I wanted and everything like that.